So you'll want to find your first base or dupe stash on 2B2T. Well, you've certainly come to the right place. Today, I'm going to show you the tips, tricks, and secrets to base hunting on 2B2T. Hunting down bases on 2B2T, for the most part, is all about technique. Start by thinking in the mind of a base builder. Where would you build your base on 2B2T? Probably as far as you can walk until you get bored. But some players are more strategic. They may have a location all planned out at specific coordinates. They may have even taken advice from one of my previous videos, how to hide your base on 2B2T. But some players do things a bit differently. They may forget to break the portal in the nether or simply build too close to spawn. Some players don't even show any care in the world of how they get there. Regardless, everyone on 2B2T builds bases all over the place, and there's always a vast supply of them to be found. So when you're trying to hunt for a base on 2B2T, it can certainly depend on what you're looking for. If you're looking for small dupe stashes or spawn bases, try searching around 50,000 to 150,000 blocks out. But if you want to find larger, more established bases, you may have to search in the hundreds of thousands or even millions of blocks out. But keep in mind that the farther you go outwards from the spawn point, the chances of you finding a base will decrease. So if you're just starting out with base hunting, I'd stay closer to spawn just to get the hang of it. Now let's go over what tools and items you'll need to start base hunting on 2B2T. Technically, you don't really need much, but of course you'll need food and some basic tools, and that'll certainly get you started. However, that doesn't mean other items won't help make your base hunting experience a lot better. For instance, elytras. This will speed up your travel rate exponentially, which will save you a lot of time. But this is 2B2T. Elytras on their own are pretty much useless for base hunting, unless you have a hacked client with an elytra fly mod. This pretty much makes you fly like you're in creative mode, and is considerably faster than walking. The other mod you should use is called Search. Basically, you input any block you want into the client, and it will automatically mark it with a tracer whenever you come across it. When base hunting, this can be extremely useful if you're looking for any specific clues. Oh, and by the way, all the mods that I mention in this video are included in Impact Client, which is free to download and is used by most of the players on 2B2T. Alright, so you have your Elytra, Elytra fly hacks, and search. But how do you actually find bases? Of course you can just aimlessly walk in one direction until you find a base, but doing this is pretty inefficient and will probably take you a lot longer to actually find something. So there are various techniques that players use instead. What I usually do is to look for clues. Start off by traveling far in the nether. As you go farther out, you'll see less and less player activity. This is where the search mod comes into play. If you spot something like an ender chest or leftover obsidian, that could mean that a portal may have been placed there at some point. So in any case that you suspect that something was there, I would remake the portal and go into the overworld to see what's on the other side. I've also had times where I did this and found huge, intact bases, but other times, I'd just find nothing. But keep this in mind, if you find yourself going through really any portal on 2B2T and end up finding nothing on the other side, well, that may not necessarily be the case. Meet New Chunks. This is a mod that shows you every chunk that is generated for the first time in a Minecraft world. This is extremely useful because whenever a player travels to a new location where no other players have been, they have to walk into completely new chunks that were never generated before. This leaves what many hunters like to call a chunk trail. The red squares you see represent the new chunks. This makes it extremely easy to mark out a path from a player generating new terrain. But there's something else you need to keep in mind when using new chunks. The closer you are to spawn, the more likely that there will be pre-existing terrain from players traveling across the overworld. So don't expect long, continuous chunk trails under 150,000 blocks from spawn. If you're looking for bases that close to spawn, the most you can really do is to just randomly walk or fly around the overworld. Because of this, I usually tend to hunt for bases really far out. Yes, it does take longer to find bases the farther you go out, but it can certainly be worth it. But a lot of the time, you'll strike out. Sometimes chunk trails just randomly end for no reason, or they end at a tiny dirt shack or a nether portal. And that brings me to the other thing about base hunting. A lot of the time, it's a gamble. 
You can follow a trail for literally hours, only to get to the end to find nothing. Or maybe you'll get lucky and find an enormous base with all the duped items you could ever want. Base hunting is for players that have patience. You will eventually find something, but it can take a really long time. So with all that out of the way, you should now be ready to go hunt down bases on 2B2T. But if you're looking for even more tips about base hunting, you should tune into my base hunting live streams where I do all of the hunting live. You can ask me questions in the chat or just observe what I do. If you want to be notified about those streams, you can either subscribe to my channel or join my Discord server where I announce every live stream I do. Maybe you should do both. So there you go. That's how I hunt down bases on 2v2t. And like I said earlier, there are tons of techniques and other ways to find bases on 2v2t, but this is the main method I use, and I've had pretty good success with it. Anyways, that's all I have for today. I wish you all the best of luck.